And now joining us on the stadium pregame show brought to you by Bean Brothers Hardware of Lincolnton is the coach of the Northern Nash Knights, Andrew Ferris. Coach, thanks for joining us today. No problem. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Well, Coach, congratulations on getting to the 3A state championship game. Looking back, uh, your team's come quite a long way since the first season you coached there back in 2018 where you went 3-7. and seven. What yeah. have you done to really uh, turn the program around like that? Well, I, mean, I got to give all the credit to the players because that's really where it all falls ultimately. Um, but, you know, it has been a really, um, you know, confluence of factors as far as support from administration and, you know, everybody above me and, you know, and then obviously kind of hitting it at the right time. We got some a good class, our senior class, when they came in, you know, we knew they were going to be really good. So it's kind of just all happened at the right time. And, and then some of those guys that were still here, I specifically think about the 2019 class, uh, or 2019 season, 2020 class that um, really kind of got us over the hump. They had the first winning season in a long time at eight and five in the 2019 season. So they okay, they really kind of got us on the right foot, headed in the right direction. And these guys have carried it on from then. So it's been it's been nice to be a part of. Yeah, Northern Nash had quite a dry spell there. Went to the state championship game in 2002, and then really wandered in the wilderness for quite a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they um, and you know, ironically, I was at another school coaching against Northern Nash back there in that time, and they were really, really good. And uh, you know, then I don't know, some things happened in the county and whatnot. And, uh, a new school opened, and you know, obviously, I took some students and some athletes and cut some numbers and that type of thing. And so it just it was a little while before they got back. I was at another school in 2010, and and Northern had a good team. We ended up playing them in the second, the third round of playoffs. So, you know, there was a year or so in there, but, yeah, it was for a few years. It was tough. I saw your interview after the game last weekend where you talked about how there had been some criticism of your team. Maybe they hadn't played a great schedule. Uh, that kind of dovetails with what we heard a lot about in this end of the state about East Lincoln. There were some questions about their schedule. So two teams that maybe people overlooked, and now here you are playing in the finals. <laughs> well, I don't know. Well, I don't know what their schedule looks like because you know, being in the East, I don't know much about the teams in the West. But I can tell you, looking at them on film, they look amazing. So I don't know what <laughs> you know. I don't know about the schedule, but yeah, I mean, you know, just the fact, I guess, with for specifically seventy first, you know, fan talk and that type of thing. People said things that you know they're a very physical team, and people had kind of questioned whether we could be physical, especially early in the year. Um, but, you know, we know when we get into the, the, the real meat of our schedule, especially in the conference when we play Southern Nash and Rocky Mount and, and just a lot of the teams in our conference, Nash Central this year, they're very, very physical. And so we knew that was coming. And, um, you know, I think we kind of proved that at times through the season. Um, and just, you know, I did, I did wonder last Friday night just that that was the best team we'd seen so far. And so I, you always wonder how your team's going to respond. And so I really was just proud of them for stepping up to that because 71st is a very physical team. So to be able to step up and play with them in that type of game, you know, that was nice to see. And that game was amazing. No, more, Not a lot of scoring in the first half, but, boy, the second half and especially the fourth quarter, it was just back and forth body blows by each team. And you get a touchdown with under a minute to go, that's quite a ball game. It was, yeah. It was almost kind of amazing. I didn't even realize. Uh, I mean, I knew we were getting down to the wire, but kind of had to look at the scoreboard and, you know, really uh, just kind of remind myself that, you know, hey, this is it. Like, this is this is it. This is this is the last play. Because it, it was, like you said, it was just going back and forth, back and forth. And before you realize it, you're down to the wire in the fourth quarter. It, it really was. It. I'm sure it was very exciting to watch, nerve wracking to coach, but exciting to watch. <laughs> So taking a look at your team, um, very balanced offense. You've got a uh, big three offensively, Randall King, Keno Jones, and Dwayne Mitchell. Uh, they really drive your offense. Right. Um, and Keno especially, running and passing, a nice dual threat that should give uh, East Lincoln something to think about when they're looking at the tape. Man, I hope so. Uh, I hope we can give that defense something to think about. Good gracious, because they give us enough to think about. Um, they are really, really good. But, yeah, those three guys have been, you know, they've been our catalyst all year. And um, we've had other guys to step up and be, you know, a big part of the offense as well. But those guys have been a bulk of it. And uh, and specifically, Keno, obviously, as the quarterback, 
has been, you know, our heart and soul and our leader for sure. So hopefully those guys will definitely come up big for us on Saturday because we're going to need them to. And then defensively, Carson Jenkins is far and away your leader on the team. Um, right. He, he, yeah. uh, tons of tackles, uh, several for uh, quite a few for loss. Uh, just impressive watching him run around on defense. Yeah, yeah. He unfortunately he's a little undersized, and I think that might be you know a reason why he hadn't gotten as much you know collegiate interest. But he is a heck of a player. Um, since he got here, he has just been he's such a hard worker. He's always in the weight room. He's always doing what he's supposed to be doing. Um, I mean, he's always the kid that always asks if he can go to the weight room when he has downtime, where other kids are like, hey, let me find somewhere to, you know, hold up for a minute and kind of hide out. But Carson's always, hey, can I go to the weight room? He's just, I mean, he's he's super. And great kid to coach, you know, does what you ask him to do. Anything you ask him to do, he's going to try. He can give it 100%. And, I mean, he is just a great kid, and we will miss him next year for sure. Okay, so you've got the game coming up today. Was there anything in your preparation this week that you might do a little differently just because it's a Saturday night game or you're in a uh, bigger stadium? Anything different? Well, the uh, the week has so far ended up good as far as weather is concerned, but there were some – uh, forecast of rain through the week. So we were afraid we were going to have to be off the field for maybe a day or two. We might have to just go inside and watch film uh, and, you know, kind of do chalk talk. But um, if if it holds up, we'll go outside. But that's kind of the thing. We felt like there was a day that if we had to miss outside, we could still be on the same schedule that we normally have. And then, I mean, the only thing really as far as the stadium is concerned is I think we'll try to get there maybe a little early and go in and watch some of the uh, 1A game that plays before us. Tarboro is in our area and a lot of our kids know their kids and so we might go in and try to catch some of that and maybe try to get the stars out of our eyes as far as the big stadium and stuff before we have to you know hit the locker room. Well good luck in the game today. Coach thanks for joining us on the Bean Brothers Hardware of Lincolnton pregame show. Uh, we're looking forward to a great game between East Lincoln and Northern Nash. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. And now joining us on the Bean Brothers Hardware of Lincolnton Stadium pregame show is the coach of the 3A West Regional Champions, Coach David Lubowitz of the East Lincoln Mustangs. Coach, congratulations on a big win Friday night. Oh, thank you very much, and thanks again for having me on. Well, it's always good having you on here because it means you're winning and you're advancing. And we're going on to the next game. But look back at the uh, South Point game. After some uh, fairly easy games in the playoffs, including one that was surprisingly easy with Kings Mountain, you got into a fist fight with uh, South Point last week. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, we knew we talked about it uh, last week before the game, uh, just how tough a group they were. And, uh, you know, there wasn't going to be a lot of quitting them. And they were going to uh, battle till the end. And they did. They uh they made uh, one heck of a run there at the end, and thankfully we were able to uh, snuff it out. But uh, you know, we knew going into the game that South Point wasn't wasn't going to be a pushover. Were you the, the Were you a little bit disappointed though that you did have a couple opportunities to maybe extend the margin even further than fourteen points? Was it things you didn't do, or things that South Point did that maybe uh, caused some issues there? I think probably a combination of both. I think, you know, that the first time uh, when it was 7 nothing and we went down, uh, we probably should have kicked the field goal. Uh, I was trying to go for 14 because if you can get a 14 on uh, a double wing team, they, they got to start thinking about throwing the ball, and that's never good. Uh, so I think, you know, we, we took some points off the board that we probably could have had on the board early, uh, which would have helped us out. And I also think, you know, their defense was really, really, really good. So when we got uh, closer to the end zone, we got down in that red zone, uh, you know, they just kind of uh, buttoned it up and played extra hard and kept us out. So, uh, you know, kudos to them for playing a, a heck of a game. But, you know, thankfully, again, we, we pulled it out. Yeah, and they came in billed as a bend but don't break defense, and they proved that out. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You got down close later in the game. So next, now next up is going to be Northern Nash and – just a question here, what do teams have to provide to each other as far as video or whatever uh, in playoff games like this? Uh, two games is what's suggested, uh, I believe, by the state. So we exchanged the last two games. 
that we played. So they got our soft point in Kings Mountain, and uh, we got their uh, last two playoff games, which was 71st and uh, Triton. Okay, I was just curious about that because now you're playing a team that's in a different part of the state, and while we know about Kings Mountain and South Point and West Henderson, teams like that, kind of hard to figure out teams. We just don't see them or hear much about them in the east part of the state. Like, Yeah, you know, it, it, it's, it's a struggle. It's a struggle coaching-wise because, you know, with the Kings Mountains, you, uh, we had the rain game. We played on a Thursday, so on Friday we went and watched them play. I mean, they're that close. I uh, literally knew nothing about Northern Nash until this week. Uh, and then, you know, just got those two game films, and both of those were on a wet field. So uh, it's really, really difficult when you start playing the East versus West teams because, you know, you don't even have friends over there. Nobody could have gone to the game. You don't have uh, any coaches you really know. So, yeah, it's really tough to figure out, uh, you know, what, what they really like to do because you just have that little glimpse of two games. So you've seen the tape of them. Uh, is there anything you're going to do different in preparation for this game, A, because it's a team you haven't seen, and B, because it's a Saturday and not a Friday? Uh, well, you know, the Saturday thing, we're just kind of, we've, we've kind of pushed everything back. Uh, so every day this week, we just, uh, we did two Mondays, and then Wednesday was our Tuesday practice, Thursday was our Wednesday practice, uh, Friday was our Thursday practice. So I mean, that stuff we, is all done. Uh, we're just kind of slowing the week down. And then, I mean, as far as preparing defensively uh, for them, they're very similar to us. So the looks we got this week against our offense uh, are going to be similar looks to what they what they give us Saturday, hopefully. And then preparing for them offensively, uh, we really don't have a great idea what they're going to do defensively. We've seen a couple of different looks against different style of offense than us. So, uh, you know, he's got to kind of be prepared for everything. Players, coaches, just uh, ready for him to line up and then kind of see what they can give us. And looking at what Northern Nash has done this year, they seem to be another balanced team, kind of like what you were expect, what you would get from Kings Mountain. Not one-sided, all pass or all run like some of the other playoff teams. Yeah, they are very balanced, very good running back, good core wide receivers. The quarterback, uh, you know, everything kind of flows through him. Uh, he can run it and throw. He's got a big arm. Uh, he's got good targets to throw to. They, you know, they're spread. They got a huge offensive line. Uh, really big, probably. Uh, I don't know, probably the biggest. If, if not, um, Ledford or, yeah, Ledford might have been bigger. Uh, but I, mean, I doubt it. Uh, this is a, it's a really big uh, offensive line, and it's a, it's a really good offense and a very aggressive, very fast defense. So a couple of people have asked me just about, you know, who would you compare them to? And I'd compare them to uh, like a Hickory or a Statesville uh, year in, year out. You know, a lot of good athletes on the edge and then the really big kids up front that uh, seem to like to hit people. Yeah, one of them in particular that likes to hit people, Carson Jenkins, uh, he's got 176 tackles and 21 for loss, so kind of like uh, facing a, a version of Ben Cutter across from you. Yeah, he's a hustle guy, just like Ben is. Uh, it flies around. Uh, you, you rarely see him give up the big play. He's generally in their backfield a lot. Uh, really good footwork. Uh, has a good nose for the ball. I think you're about spot on. He's, he's like a, a Ben Cutter type player. Yeah, you can see he's got a huge number of tackles for loss. It's just uh, he's he's all over the field for them. You know, 21 tackles for loss. So this team seems to be a little bit more aggressive than what you'd see out of South Point, a lot more tackles for loss. So um, so it is similar to teams you've seen before. That has to help a little bit. Yeah, I think so. I think defensively um, they look a lot like – not necessarily their players, but their style of play is really similar to North Lincoln. Aggressive off the edge, they're an odd front. Um, they um, man up a little bit. They play a little bit of zone, uh, but they make a lot of there's a lot of chaos in the backfield. And then offensively, I think they're you know similar to us uh, in sets and formations and plays. So <clears throat> hopefully, it's stuff we've seen before. They can't. Hopefully, they don't throw anything at us that uh, you know confuses our kids too much. But I think. Uh, it's just going to be a good football game. I think it's going to be what a championship game is supposed to be. 
Well, Coach, we've enjoyed talking to you all these games this season, and good luck in the game tonight. Um, it's, it's been a lot of fun covering your team this year. Thank you. Thank you very much, and I appreciate all the coverage. Uh, and I obviously look forward to doing it next year. Sounds great. All uh, right. Lubowitz of the East Lincoln Mustangs joining us on the Bean Brothers Hardware of Lincolnton pregame show. And we'll continue with the pregame right after this. Screw it tight with a stop in at Bean Brothers Hardware and Supply in Lincoln. They now have decking screws, quick drive screws, and grip right deck screws. Also, pass low nails and hangers too. See the new stiletto framing hammers. Also, craft and furniture paint. And get 0% financing on the Skag and Hus Varna mowers. And now, all remaining Christmas items in the Christmas shop, half price, at Bean Brothers Hardware and Supply, 969 Reachville Road in Lincoln, online at beanbrothershardware.com, and like them on Facebook, too. Turn your home into a masterpiece with one call to Bean Brothers Landscaping. They'll make your home the envy of the neighborhood, from lawn care to landscaping and hardscaping. Bean Brothers Landscaping can help. They now do pool installation and landscape design. And they even do snow removal too. They are licensed and insured and do commercial and residential work. Just call 704-718-4988. Again, 704-718-4988 for Bean Brothers Landscaping. Like them on Facebook too.